What does a quantum computer do? It uses qubits that can represent a multitude of possible quantum states and performs operations on them. Unlike the bits of classical computers, which can only represent one state at a time, quantum computers are free of sequential constraints. Think of the old phrase, looking for a needle in a haystack. That's the perfect description of an intractable problem. If the needle is the solution to your intractable problem and the stalks of hay are all the millions of non-solutions to it, how do you get it solved? A classical computer would have to look at each piece of hay one at a time and determine if it's a needle. Is this a needle? No. Is that a needle? No. Nope. What about this one? Again, no. It would take us ages. A quantum computer could metaphorically shake up the contents of the haystack and examine everything in it in a short period of time. Of course, first you have to write an algorithm that tells the qubits what you're looking for. With that algorithm running, the quantum computer can identify likely needles and discard everything else. When it's done, the quantum computer has identified a smaller, more manageable collection of things that have a high probability of being needles. Then you can bring back your trusty classical computer to do a sequential analysis to discover which of the smaller collection is actually the needle. So don't count out classical computers. For most computational problems, the sequential format of classical computing is just fine. You can relax. You're not going to need to replace your phone or laptop anytime soon. But for intractable problems that have thousands of variables and millions of potential solutions, you need a quantum computer. Or you could just wait thousands of years while your classical supercomputer runs through each possibility one at a time. What do quantum computers do? They solve intractable problems when you don't have millennia to spare.